day of January 2012 we are today in it. Yeah, yeah this is 22nd of January 2012. Am I correct? Yes. You know, God had visited us in this year as he had promised us from the past uh, 12 years. And he has reiterated it again and again to us over the years. And this year, God has woken us up. I told them the first service, I began to prepare you now for the manifestation of the main destiny God has sent Christ to tabernacle. You know, if you look at the way I'm dressed to today, you seem as if I'm dressed to go for a party. Yes, I was in a party yesterday. One of my daughters in this house turned 50. She turned 50 on Wednesday. Dickiness for me, That lady who sits behind mommy here, mommy's uh, Amo Biares. <laughs> I'm sure that many of you know her, if not everybody. Does she look 50? No, no she look maybe 30 something. But the fact is that yesterday, uh, uh, Wednesday she was 50, and yesterday we went to celebrate her by eating some cows and stuff. <laughs> and uh, as a father, I said to her that I will continue the celebration. She's tuned to us on the, on the internet now, I'm sure, in the, in the hotel. She has to have some rest. So I decided that exactly as I dressed her yesterday, I must dress to the church. I shouldn't just dress like this for party. And then when it comes to church, I look like a... Uh, <laughs> so, do you like how I look? Yes. Even if you didn't say yes, I say yes for you. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I went to the cathedral during the week when they were walking in cathedral. And I was walking down the, the uh, foyer. I said to myself that, my oh my, when this cathedral is finished, I have to rededicate my wife in wedding. <laughs> I said I will wed her, and I, I, I stood, I said, she will stand here, and the, the white gown of her wedding will be flowing all over the ground. <laughs> like this. And I put some bouquet every step up. <laughs> but now, the fact is, that I said to myself that this other wedding that I wed her, she's the one who has to say I do, not I. <laughs> I said I do many years ago. So now I'm going to tell her that, do you, do you, do you decide to, to make this man your, your, your wedded husband? And she must say, I do. <laughs> and I was enjoying myself, you know, with the scenery there that blessed are those who wait patiently to be wedded in the cathedral. Mm -hmm. Well, the work of the cathedral is going on fine. Thank God we have finished our roof, which costed us about 300000 and which was done by our voluntary donation in this house. And today at the third service, after the third service, I've said that every member should come over so that you can go and see the roof. It's good that when you put your money into a project, you see the project yourself completed. But at the same time, you're going today, if you have the time or during the week, they will start stripping up, the, they've started stripping up the inside. You will see the wall of the, in, in, you know, the, Auditorium itself, as it was built 1937. You know, they have put wallpaper, cosmetic. They have removed the wallpaper now. And when you enter, you can see how the wall really looks at the foyer at the back. It looks so gorgeous. And so by tomorrow, we're going to have a lot of men coming here from Ireland into the cathedral. They will start ripping off the carpets. And they will start um, ripping off the whole wall on the side. And the interior will fully begin. Our target is that by March, third week, they will have finished all the interior so that we can have our convention there. And for the sake of this, we have moved our convention this year from first week of March, first Sunday of March to the first Sunday of April. So that convention will be the last Monday of March into the first uh, um, Sunday of April. Now, what this then also means is that I believe very much that we are sitting on gold here in this church. Because the second phase that we are going into will cost us about a million pounds. We have a budget with uh, the contractor of a hundred thousand pounds at least every month to keep the work going. Last year, we did not only pay for the roofs. All the roofs were changed from asbestos to clad and the flat roofs were relayed to brand new ones so that, you know, 
at least in our generation, we have problem about roof. Uh, before it, we need repair. All these youngsters will have grown up. Why we are sitting behind with gray hairs and in our nose and in our eyebrows. And those of you who are Mary Kay, <laughs> as at the time that Mary Kay, you put it in your cheek and it will fall down <laughs> and uh, cry. <laughs> so we won't need to repair anything about roof. But at the same time, you know, as we are moving into doing the interior, uh, we believe very much that by the time we finish the interior, then our third phase will begin. Our third phase is extension on the side of the auditorium of 15,000 square feet, where we will have halls for those who wait, because the auditorium, you cannot do um, socials in the auditorium. So that we have halls to, to even if you wait, like myself or you rethink, we will give you a place to have your socials. And also all the facilities for the, um, the uh, restaurants, where we'll be taking care of the uh, retirees, you know, the senior citizen. Uh, every day, 10 to 12, we want to make food available to them free of charge. And also a resource center for them. If they have a need, all the retirees, they can call us, they can come in. And whatever be their need in the nation, we will make sure we meet it up. Uh, our law center will be opening in that extension. Um, and, um, you know, the youth club and various, various uh, projects that we're having there. And there's a room there, a, a hall there for nursing mothers. Because nursing mothers will not be allowed to come into the main auditorium, but they are attached to the main auditorium where, you know, it's just live too. So that when their children make noise, it doesn't matter, the children can make noise there, you know. Sometimes when we sing, they don't want to sing. And when we are talking, they want to sing. <laughs> so they can just start their chorus there all the nursing mothers, but we well taken care of. So that is the third phase of the project. And that one will demand, um, you know, complete uh, structural design, which we have, we, have, we have done, and architectural planning, which we have planned, which we have done, and approval and all stuff like that. And those who are involved in the government council are quite very much cooperative, and we'll be able to start that very side of it. When do we open a facility we are not sure yet, but we know that we are starting service there in March. With our but it's not good to open a facility that is half-built. And we thought we would complete the project by July to meet up with the Queen's Silver Jubilee. If all things work as expected, of course, well, whatever the case may be, we are, we are hosting the Olympics in the facility. And uh, by on the thirtieth of this month, we are hosting some members of House of Lords who are coming in to see the facility for the first time. Uh, we are working together with them to make sure that we will integrate ourselves into what is going on in the in our in our nation. It has become the biggest cathedral available, you know, within our borough and within the South East London. So, a lot of activities are going on within this week and the next two, three weeks. I want you to continue to pray for every staff that work there that God will protect them. We don't want any staff to have an accident or somebody cut his legs or break anything, that the protection of God will be over everyone who work there. Also for yourselves, which we have been praying now for the past seven days, that the Lord will bless us. We do not want to give out of struggle. You know, I was telling them in the first service, widows might. Some people are ignorant about it. They think widow's might is a small money. It's not a small money. Jesus says that widow brought everything she had. It's not small money. She emptied herself. That's why Jesus called it widow's might. You know, might in science is a potential energy. Are somebody with me here? Some people's. That is potential energy. And potential energy is the energy that triggers the kinetic energy. So might, therefore, is a potential that's all she had. And now that we are contributing towards the, the second phase, we must give all we have towards the project for several reasons. I'm going to talk to you today about uh, one of the will of God. 
for several reasons. One of the reasons is that when you walk into the place and you see brand new carpets, you see the chairs are new, everything is new, you have conviction in your spirit and satisfaction that my money is in part of this. If any minister comes and bless the people who build this church, you have identity with that. But if you do not give to it, you will always have the guilt whenever I spoken. And you don't understand that that place will provoke a God's blessing. Ministers will come, they will always bless the people who put it together. Because what we decided to do and give to God in this country, we made sure that we made up our mind that, you know, it would be magnificent. Now, the fact is that in our board, we have someone like myself who chaired the board, who I have um, over the years, I've, I've practiced a lot in my Soviet career in engineering surveying, which took me into, you know, building construction road and stuff like that. And from 1992, I designed what the auditorium should look like. And we have someone like Pastor Tayo, who is also an architect. Now we have in our mind that haven't us gotten a building. Different between us and other ministers who are building, who are not in the trade is this. We know what we want. Everything in that building, we dictate it. We are not ignorance in construction field and because of that our taste is top i did research on auditoriums myself and i got the best of all the auditoriums in the whole world and we decided to do better so when they asked us what's the budget i said there's no budget tell me what it will cost and our god will made it up that's how we operate so that we will make that place an edifice in the United Kingdom, there will be a reference point of excellence and power Amen. and knowledge. Amen. And you know something? God will bless us for it. Amen. I pray to God that I don't want outsiders to come until we have been blessed. And he will bless us. He is blessing us, of course. There are more doors will open for us. And we will be able to be proud of that, that work. But I want to say to you also that um, this year, God has given us the opportunity for me to write the prayer book, Divine Encounter. And we have been studying this every day. And everyone who has studied this have gone very far. Because this book tells you what to read a day. And then on the second side, it tells you what to pray daily. Like today is day 22. And it talks about overcoming the attacks of the enemy. And there is a write-up here about Gideon. How Gideon was told by God to go and destroy the Amalekites, who have been worrying them all these years. And how Gideon was afraid. And he gathered so many people. And how God weeded them to 300 from 33,000. And how haven't God weeded the force to the most minima, which in human mathematics, it is impossible to have victory. Because in human understanding, the more people, the more victory is sure. But in God's understanding, the lesser the people, the more effective the, part, the battles. Because it helps God to really flex his muscles. And so, they went through the process of weeding, and having wounded everyone, God now inspired Gideon to go and spy the enemy's camp. Because Gideon was still afraid. And then when Gideon went to the enemy's camp, he had an enemy telling his dream to another, another enemy. And the other enemy interpreted that that dream is nothing but the sword of Gideon. And when he heard that the enemy already had had defeat in their mind. Gideon's heart was strengthened. He came back and said, guys, we are ready for this battle. And God went for battle, to battle for them. But what this tells you in your word of thought for today is that the, the arm of flesh will fill you. Yes. The battle is not yours. And what I have read today, if you have prayed it before you came this morning, which I expect you to do, before you go out in the morning, Christ of Naku member must take this book and read and pray. So that if anybody meets you on the day, you can share what you learned with them. 
I will transform their lives and pray. And what I said there is that whatever battle you are going through today, that I announce your victory Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And I told you that your victory is not according to your speculation. There is a God in heaven who all, always allows you and I to be part of the battle, not because he needed us, but because he wanted, to, to, uh, he wanted us to be happy that we also did something, you know? And so he fights the battle for us. And if God did that for Gideon, he will do it for you. Another thing that you learn from it is this. Do you know in every battle that you are, how God operates is that he goes to the, behind you to the mind of your enemy and terrify your enemy. So by the time you come to the battle, your enemy is already afraid. During the seven, the seven days night vigil, I spoke a lot and taught people a lot. You know, whenever we gather here, especially in this building, if you're a member of this house, don't miss it. Don't afford it. The information God gives are not common. And you may not hear it again for life. Because revelation is so. And we've dealt with many things through all the prayer points that we have here that can help the mind of everybody. But the fact is this, today what God told you is this, the battle is not yours. It doesn't matter what battle you're going through, you know. Someone says that apostle doesn't know what I'm going through. Do I need to know? Do you know what I'm going through? No. Eh? No. Or you think you are the only one going through? I woke up a few days ago and I said to myself that what, is, what, what really am I doing in this world? Ask my wife. Ask my son. Brother Samuel, where is Brother Samuel? Did I not tell you? That, you know, I just said to myself that what am I doing in this world? And I just felt the whole world, I said, what a miserable place. I woke up to meet myself here. Huh? I looked at how miserable the world is. You know what I now prayed? I said, Lord, help me to make the maximum of this earth before I depart. This is a useless place, but help me to make the maximum of it. Well, useless in, comparable, in comparison to the paradise. But at the same time, God brought us in this place. Though in my brain everything is useless upon useless, all is useless. But then <laughs> I came to sanity that but God didn't create you useless. There are goodness in this heart. There is joy in this heart. There is peace in this heart. So I changed my mind. I said, God, you know, because I can't die now. Of course, I have to live my full lifespan. Either I hate it or I like it. I said, Lord, help me to maximize my existence on earth. And all this came from studying this book on prayer. By Friday, we'll have the revised edition of this, which will be a fuller version. And we're going to go again for another 30 days praying this. Don't miss the prayer. Now, every 6 p.m. we prayed. My decision is that we will pray also every 9 p.m. So that those who are not able to come for 6 p.m. prayer, you can show up for 9 p.m. prayer. And every 12 in the midnight in your home, get up and pray the second day's prayer. This is to make you very active in seeking the face of God. Is somebody resident? Yes, so I'm going to talk to you now, a few minutes. What I will have been sharing with you, which came from this book, is the mind of God for you. It is necessary for Christians to understand who God is. And what God is and what he is to you. The major problem in the church of God on earth is many people who go to church don't know who God is. I said in the first service, if you're a member of CFT, count yourself fortunate and count yourself privileged. I told you because God is a God who operates here and churches like these are, are few on earth. Many people gather in many places on a weekly basis, aimless, and they go hopeless. They go with a hope, a type of hope, but it's a false hope. All this hope of God will do it for you. All right? Why they are not taught what to do for God to do it. All this hope of telling people that you have a miracle of 24 hours when you are ungodly. Are you with me now? And the people will believe in it and their hope will be dashed. Messages that does not cause human beings 
to individually seek the face of God. You have them all over the place. Need-minded messages. A church like this on earth is rare. And because of that, if you are part of this house, be really part. You know, I told you about Nigeria. 19... Is it 2009? When God revealed to me that I saw people coming to bomb Nigeria. They came from Niger Republic. I saw it. I won the government of Nigeria. It was published in five papers. One of the governors heard about it and he sent people and they, had, they, had, they arrested people in his own state. He, his friend was there when I first said it, before it was published. Told him that night. And second day he went and rounded them off. But let me say this to you. The church leaders neglected it because whose mouth is speaking? And I kept my mouth shut, came back to my base because this is where God sent me. If it is here, if God says anything to me here, I go to 10 Downing Street, go and check the internet, you will see me in 10 Downing Street. We talk to the government of Great Britain, they listen. We talk to the church leaders of Great Britain, they listen. But Nigeria is not so. When they started bombing them, I reminded you what God said. Recently when the bomb started, you remember what I said? It is just the beginning of sorrow. Yesterday, did you know what happened in Nigeria? Over 160 people have been killed yesterday in that nation. Three days ago, let me tell you this. Pastors in Nigerian pastors in London gathered themselves together. They called me and I went. We held a prayer vigil on Friday for Nigeria. But on Friday day, we decided to go to Nigeria Embassy to go and see the ambassador and tell him how we are not happy with the killings of our fellow brethren in Nigeria. And especially how we are unhappy at the way the federal government of Nigeria has uh, acted in this case. When we got to the embassy, those of us who went are supposedly Nigerians, even if we're half Nigerian. <laughs> the most amazing thing is that the, the ambassador of Nigeria, who by constitutional delegation was posted to this country to listen to the voice of the citizen of Nigeria in this country, I was so ashamed. He does not know his constitutional disposition. Because I was the one appointed to take the petition and I went there only for him to send someone to come and see us. At the gates. And open the door, let us come in. They refused. It's like refusing in Nigeria at the border of Nigeria that you cannot enter the Nigerian border. So I stood there and I told them that you made the... They made a mistake. It is Apostle Alfred Williams. I said to the guy who was, who was receiving us that we have come to express our constitutional rights. But it's unfortunate that our constitutional dele dele delegates had failed in his duty. And we told them, these are our own expression of what is happening. They cannot understand visions. So we have no, we don't talk visions there. They are, they should understand law, and that's why we must speak with them. How we express our discontent on how it was handled, and especially the statement of the president of Nigeria, that there are saboteurs in his cabinet, and his inability to exercise his constitutional right as the commander-in-chief of armed forces by sacking everybody. We delivered our communique, but it's unfortunate that is the night they killed over 160 people now. But you know what I'm telling you this? God spoke here. God told Nigeria the solution here. I went to Nigeria and told the church leaders, the solution in the hands of church leaders. But the church leaders now are doing what they like. I'm saying that to tell you this, that you are in this house where God speaks. Don't take it for joke. Every child 
always surpass their parents. I don't give you message to make you feel good. I hear God and I tell you, you look at it, you hear it, it happens. You should do better than me. Are you with me now? Is it too fast? No. I gave you principle in a book in your hand. Let me take you to it. Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. What does it say? Someone tell me here. This book of the law, everybody again must know it. Yes, this book of the law must not what? Do not let this book of the law depart from your mouth. And then, you must. This book of the law must not depart from your mouth. Mm -hmm. And you meditate upon it day and night. Uh -huh. Third one. And be careful to do all what is written therein. And then you shall make your way prosperous. You shall have good success. Correct? Let me talk to you about your mind and your mouth. Look at that scripture again. Put it on the board, please. If you are coming into this house for the first time, Christ the Tabernacle is a university of learning bibliology. You must, when you come to this house, I teach you Bible, you must know it. If I meet you on the road, you say, hi, pastor. I will say, what is the book of today that we are reading? <laughs> I'll call everybody, come over, he wants to lecture us. Come on, come on, everybody come on here. That doesn't mean you should run for me when you see me. I will run after you. <laughs> I will pursue you. Are you with me now? Because I've given you what to read every day. Hello? Now, let me show you some secrets. That scripture says, this book of the law must not depart from mouth. But before a, a word comes to human mouth, what do you do? It goes to your mind. You must have read it with your eyes or had it in your ears. So it means for you in this section, what I want to show you is this. You must be careful the things you hear in your ears. Put a filter in your ears. Do not accept into your mind what is not constructive to your life. Ever. Make it a decision. Anything that will waste your life, don't accept it. It will process in your mind. Because whatever you process in your mind, the moment you speak it out, it becomes what will direct and dictate your future. You process a thing in your mind, and you speak it out, you are laying a bed for yourself to, to lay. For what you speak out of your mouth, which has been processed in your mind, determines your behavior. It determines what, what becomes of you. It determines what rules over your life. In the morning, I ask a question. How many here have taken ganja before? You don't know what ganja is? I don't know in this life, whether in this, this, this society now, I mean... This, these days, I, I mean, because my, my, my children always say some slangs, I don't understand it. And I tell them, what do you mean? And they say, oh, in our days, this is what we call it. Now, ganja is ganja. <laughs> I'm not talking about ganju, I mean ganja. Anybody who had cracked before, cocaine, cracks and stuff like that, yeah? Are they not here? <laughs> my friend, what's my with you? <laughs> I was scanned by Holy Ghost and I'll point you out. Holy Ghost. Mm. <laughs> do you know something about crack cocaine and, and ganja and all these drugs? How do we come about them? Association. And the association gets it into our mind through communication. Someone spoke about it. You saw somebody smoking it and it's your friend. And when he smokes it and he heals it, it speaks about being high. So by hearing something that departs in your mind or by what you watched, and before you know it, your mind begins to process the thought. For you to smoke crack or ganja or to dope, you must ask for it with your mouth. Okay? So the first day you ask for it, they give you. Maybe you cough, maybe you feel uneasy, you feel dizzy, you feel vomiting, you feel all manners of stuff. 
Next time you ask for it again. By the time you ask for it for a few times, your body adapts to your asking. And after a period, you don't need to ask for it. You thirst for it. And if you don't get it, you don't get well. So it begins from sight or hearing and process of thoughts and then acting, which is decision, spoken. And then as you continue in it, though your body hates it, though you don't like it, okay? But because it's what you process in your mind, which has become a decision. You find yourself in it. And you get to a place whereby that thing now rules over you. Don't you understand? Out of the abundance of the heart, your mouth speaks. If it is so with addiction, it is even much more so with the word of God. If the process of getting addicted is just this, so also the process of getting very godly is just this. The problem of Christians is that many of us don't know the principle and some of us who know the principle don't obey the principle. Whatever you process in your mind and you speak out of your mouth determines what your future is. Keep it. So therefore, Joshua says, this book of the law must not depart from your mouth. Why didn't he say from your mind? Because it is not just in your mind. Anything that goes in your mind may not come out of your mouth. There are many thoughts you have. You don't speak it, do you? Because you know. Some of you will have some thoughts in some places. If you speak it, it's so disgraceful. Am I talking something? But the things you speak there for is the resolution of abundance of your thoughts. That's why Joshua said, This word of the law must not depart from your mouth, not from your mind. And then he says, for what you speak out of your mouth, you must meditate upon it. In other words, when you say something, listen to it and think about what you say. Listen to what you say and think about it. Do you know something? If you have this understanding I'm telling you today, you will fall into less trouble with people. Because anything you want to say to people, you first listen to it in your heart. Before you utter it. Because once you utter your word, you can't pick it back. I get me now? Anything you say now, you cannot withdraw it from the hearing of those who have heard. They have heard it. Even if you say you are sorry, what you said originally has been registered. And most times, your first statement is what people will accept. They will not accept your, your apology. Because what they were saying that, what dare, what dare you? I mean, what made you say that? If you didn't mean it, how can you say it? Especially when those statements are wrong. They can easily over, overlook the statement that is right. I will take you in a little bit into that and we'll stop. So, confession in your mouth, meditation upon what you have said or what you're about to say, and then obedience to the things that you say. If you can combine these three, you will make your life prosperous. Now listen to me, therefore, which means, therefore, that Anybody who is not prosperous on earth has nothing to do with Satan when you are born again. Those who are not born again, Satan, can, Satan is the one who rules their kingdom. Either they accept it or not. But when you are born again, for you to make yourself prosperous, then you will be prosperous and what? And be successful. Give me the New King James Version. It says, for then you will make your way prosperous and you will have what? So it is not God who will make your way prosperous. It is you. God had created prosperity already and he created disaster. You have to choose. Look at the book of Deuteronomy. I think it's chapter 30. Let me see from verse 18. Let me show you something. Many, many, many people don't understand how this world works. I declare to you this day that you will certainly be destroyed. You will not live long in the land you are 
crossing the Jordan to possess. Then the next verse. This day I call. Now go to verse 16. What led to that? You will not live long. For I command you today to love the Lord your God, to walk in his ways and to keep his command, decrees and laws. Then you will what? Then you will what? You will live on what? If you obey. Now look at what it now says, the next verse. No, 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 that's same. We haven't finished it. You to read. Don't just be clicking stuff there. The person clicking, they click. So what did he say? For I command you today to, walk, to, 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 to love the Lord your God, to walk in his ways and to keep his command, decrease laws. Uh -huh. Then you will live and increase. And the Lord God, your God will what? Bless you in what? Now, some pastors have problems about church growth. Did you see why church cannot grow? Now, if we want the church, this church to grow, those of us who are here should obey God first. And then this church will grow. Because when we obey God, people will see manifestation of what the result of obedience in us, and they will come. Isn't it? There is no devil who shut the door of growth to church. Impossible. Obedience from the preacher. Pastor. Yesterday we were coming out from the dinner. The place they took us, only God knows. We were going round and round the road is so long, so many acres, and suddenly Elder Baba was following me with his wife in their car. And then I was looking for exit. And I thought I got exit. And they followed me. And we went to dead end. <laughs> so when we went to dead end, now we found ourselves in a cool de sac. And I turned my car around. He too was looking for a way to follow. And I told my son that, did you see now? When your leader is blind <laughs> and you are following him in life, all of you will end up in dead end. That's why the Bible says, a blind lead, a blind they will fall up into. So those who are under pastors who are blind, you can imagine what they are doing. If your pastor cannot see. I don't know how someone can go to church. Pastor cannot say, thus said the Lord. He didn't see a vision. He didn't see a trend. You are following him. You can see better than him. What are you following? If it's only to just share the word of God. And you, it, you can, can share the word of God. Have you seen a doctor who doesn't know how to use stethoscope? Uh. I'm not talking about somebody saying that he's prophesying that. Uh, uh, somebody there, you know, does hear the Lord. You, you, it, it shall be well with you. Uh, <laughs> you shall be blessed. I'm not talking about that. <laughs> I'm talking about a man who hears God. A man who will speak and your life will be transformed. In one word, many lives are transformed. Listen, brothers. And so if we look at that scripture then, let me conclude that. It says, in the next verse, is that what But if your heart turns away from the Lord and you are not, uh, and are not obedient, and if you are drawn away to bow down to other gods and worship them, like many Christians today are idol worshippers. Some worship man. Who is a liar? Some worship money. Because all their heart is that if you, if you serve God, the only thing is to be rich. And they will do everything to be rich. As well as it's God's intention for us not to be poor. But if riches rule over your life, it will become your God. Are you with me now? And so he says here, if you bow down and worship them, then... I declare to you this day that you will certainly, inevitably be destroyed. This is the reason for destruction of many believers. Because you disobey the word of God. You have your own obedience different from what God had commanded. He says, you will not live long in the land. You are crossing the Jordan to enter and possess. Look at the next verse 19. This day I call what? Heaven and earth as weakness what? Against you that I have what? Set before you life and what? I love it. Blessings and what? Blessings. Now, shall we read the last line? What did it say? Yeah. Now, choose. In one of these days in your book this month, sin is your choice. To live or to die is your choice. To sin and to be holy is your choice. Satan don't make you sin. You make yourself sin. Period. 
because of your mouth and your mind that is not in check. So it is your choice. God didn't bless you. He didn't kill you. He set before you life and death. He set before you blessings and curses. Whatever you choose is what you get. Am I talking to somebody? Yes, talking. I am talking. Isn't it? Yes, my. All right. Pardon me. Go back to Joshua. So we agree together. It's a choice. It's your choice. It's your choice. It's your choice. When I call prayer meeting, it's your choice not to come. And if you did come, it's your choice. And what happened? Those who did come had testimonies in seven days. What happened? You are still praying. Because someone doesn't understand that the coming together of two is, is more powerful than one person. As, as I am anointed. I am anointed. Oh yes, I know. If you don't know that you are carrying anointing, I don't, that means that you carry something else. Listen to me. Even if the anointing is burning like fire on my head, when I'm walking like this, I'm seeing fire. <laughs> no matter how powerful my prayer is, if I join my prayer with the prayer of this man, two of us pray, it's more powerful. You know that anointing, with the anointing, oil is coming all over my body that is fire. But if I pray together with this sister, it's more powerful. Jesus says one which is what? A thousand. No matter how anointed you are. Two which is what? Calculate the mathematics. And the Bible says, do not forsake the garden of one another. When God calls for a prayer, don't, 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 don't ever miss it. It's your choice. It's your choice. There are miracles that have happened on Friday. I will let those who testify come and testify on, on Friday. I've told them. And you hear. Impossible situation. Situation that are not possible. They put God to test and he passed. During the seven days of prayer. The attitude of many Christians is this. They don't pray. They don't see God. So when Satan has helped them up, they will start praying. That's why many Christians fail. Your prayer is always defensive. No, you should be offensive all the time. To undo something that has been destroyed, it costs you more. All right? Than to prevent. Are we together? So, the Joshua then says that this book of the law must not depart from your mouth. Meditate upon it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything they are written in it. Then you will make your way what? Prosperous and what? Successful. So you understand they are four. Every word you read, think about it. Repeat it again and again and again and again. That's the principle of the prayer book. So that it can sink in your heart. You can meditate upon it and do it. One of the things that God told us to do every day in the area of prayer. Let me test you now. I'm going to test you. Every one of you. Thought, day, thought, thought, thought prayer of the first day. What do you say? Which is repeated every day. What, what scripture is it? Proverbs 21 verse 30. Okay, put it on the board for everyone so that everyone who, who probably didn't, haven't been reading their books, you see it. What does it say? Uh-huh. Let me show you how you apply Joshua 1 8. You know, it says, This book of the law must not depart from your mouth. It says, You shall measure upon it day and night and be careful to do everything written, then you make your prosperous. Now, those who have been coming for the prayers, when we're doing the prayers, I explain to them this scripture and other scriptures, and I'll do now. It says, There is no wisdom, okay, no insight, no plan can succeed against the Lord. Correct? So you understand that when God is in a plan, Satan can undo it. When God is in a plan, Satan cannot sabotage it. Am I correct? So that's the reason why our second prayer of the day, daily, God said what? What scripture is that? Eh? 16? And what does he say? You were not in the first service. 
You, we will read it first before you put it on board. Because it's, open, it's not open book exam. This is test. So that those of you who have not been reading it will see what you have missed. So that you go out of this place and because of you, we are repeating the same prayer for the next 30 days. When you finish the first 30 days. Do you see what it says there? God said to us that when we wake up in the morning, we should pray this scripture. Commit to the Lord whatever you do and your plans will what? So if you apply for us, I mean Joshua wanted to this, what does that mean? It says commit to the Lord. Commit to the Lord whatever you do. Which means that, as I explained to you, every Christian therefore must have something to present before God daily. Because you will pray this prayer in the morning. And I told you in that prayer book, you will tell the Lord what I want to do. Today, Lord, I want to do this X, Y, Z. What has that achieved in those who have been doing it? It has helped them to think a day before concerning the second day and plan for their second day. I've taught you this about, about this for a long time, but now we're achieving it simply because we have to present to the Lord on a daily basis what we will do. Some Christians sleep and they wake up with nothing. They sleep thinking nothing. They wake up thinking nothing. That's why they have nightmare. If you think about your life, you know where you want to go at the end of the year, and you know what you should do on a monthly basis to achieve the goal for the year, and you break it down to weekly achievement, and you know what you must do daily for your week to be fulfilled, you will not be regretting when others are celebrating. You will not be lying against the devil. Devil didn't let me do this. Devil didn't let where you are doing nothing with your life. That prayer point helps you to think, to restructure your life. Because every day, you must present to God what you want to do. Now, if you presented to God what you wanted to do each day, then your plan has become the plan of God. Then the second prayer, 2130, applies. No wisdom then, Satan can plan against your plan. It can't work. Have I ever come to you before and said that, ah, I wanted to achieve something and Satan didn't let me. Have you heard that from me? My dead body won't tell you that. Because whatever you commit to the Lord, the Bible says your plan will succeed. So, because I have to present to the Lord what I want to do, it helps me to think about what is going on in my life. What is my portion to my life next, ne tomorrow, next tomorrow? What am I contributing to my life? I'm not waiting for bread, manna to fall from anywhere. It came once, it will never fall again. God doesn't just send manna because some people are praying for manna. No, it's because they were hungry in the wilderness. He's the one who took them to the wilderness, so he gave them manna there. But here, here, it says you must work hard. Every hard work brings success. A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of arms. Poverty will jump upon you like a bandit. And scarcity like Adam Robber. Hello, somebody. Hey, they are giving in church. I don't have, I don't have, I don't have. You will never have. Do you know why? Because there are things the Bible says you must do to have. Hello? A little sleep, a little slumber. And what did he say? You will not have anything. Poverty. But he said every hard work bring profit. Hello? So if a Christian obey God in hard work, what does he get? Profit. If you are a Christian all the time, they want to buy. You want to buy things. You say, oh my God, I wish I had money. Let your, your mind change. You didn't have money because you didn't obey God. Hmm? To work. If you obey God to work, you will have money. Oh, someone says that there is joblessness. There is no work in England. I was watching, I was listening to, to LBC during the week. And LBC said that there are 300,000 jobs now available in England. They were talking about why the Western European came to England and took the job from citizen. And you're British, and you're British, British. And when you're British, ordinary job you can get. You, know, you are just going to say, I'm British, I'm British. We're British. And those who are Eastern European are coming and getting jobs. I'm graduate, I'm graduate. Is there a graduate one? Carry your grad, grad. <laughs> Go get a job, my friend. <laughs> get a job before your grad grad is talking. Huh? Uh -huh. Look at now. Commit to the Lord. So you have to plan. That is what the word does. 
the ultimate heart of God for you. Third John. Third John, let's see one and two. What did he say? Oh, yeah. Thank you. Don't worry. Third John. He says, To my dear friend, girls whom I love in the truth. You know, if you are going to be working on this thing, your ba- the Bible, mo- Bible must, be, must be pumping in your head. What did he say in verse 2? Dear friend, I pray that you may what? Yes. Shall we read it together? Yes. Mm-hmm. No, verse 2 I said. Look at the, NI, the King James Version, New King James Version of it. Behold, beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be or in health just as. Go back to the NIV. It says, Dear friend, I pray that you may enjoy what? Good health and that all may go well, even. Now, let me say this to you, therefore, which means that the level of prosperity you can have. Depends on your soul, your thinking, your faculty. Here, that's what he's talking about. Your mind. You remember Joshua? This book of love was never from your mouth. You must meditate upon it in your mind. Now, the wish of God for you and I is that we should be healthy all the time. And that all things should go on well for us. Doesn't mean that we won't have tests. But the end of the test will be successful. But if a life of a Christian is, I regret, I regret, I regret, it is because your soul is not getting nowhere. That is, your soul is not rich with the word. Because I want to stop in about five minutes. <coughs> Let me say this to you. Do you know the principle of the world, this world, is so legalistic, isn't it? Very, very legalistic. You marry. You have to go to court. You have to go by law. Even you talk to a friend and you have a verbal discussion and agreement, you have established a law. Hmm? A contract. You want to go to school. There are laws. Before you can be admitted, you must pass X, Y, Z. If you don't pass it, there is nothing you can do. They won't take you. And if you pass, you go to school, they give you cut off mark. You get one mark below, they fail you. The whole world is a world of law, which means that for anybody to have a success in the world, you must be compliant. <coughs> you must comply with the rules that give you that success. Am I correct? Yes. How many married women are here? Are you a married woman or you were ever married? <laughs> Raise your hand up. I want to say something. If I lie, you tell me. Put your hands down. Let me ask you this. For a woman to continue to love her husband, I think one of the laws is that the husband loved the woman. Am I correct? Yes. A woman didn't answer me. Yes. Don't worry if your husband is beside you. B- <laughs> pretend as if he's not there. And maybe he has to hear this. Excuse me. And if a man says he loves you as a woman, one of the laws is that you want to see how he did it practically. By giving you something you need. Money, you need it. You get it. Excuse me? Yeah? Attention. You get it. It's not that when you want to talk, you don't have someone to talk with, and this man is talking with every woman outside, but doesn't talk with you. You don't like that. Oh, okay. Oh, right, 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 right. When you're having a birthday, you want someone to give you a gift because you want someone to appreciate you. And if everybody gives you a gift outside, it's not a gift until your husband has what? Given you. Okay? The one that your husband gives you is very, very different because it is your husband who gave you. You want to be appreciated. 
so much. You will agree with me also, unfortunately, a lot of men are not appreciative. You will agree with me that a lot of men always say thank you inside. And you agree with me that as far as you are concerned, whatever is inside, you don't know. Hmm? So the principle is there for this book of the Lord must not depart from your For your husband to say I love you, you want to hear him say it, I and then he follow it with what? Action. Those of you who are just getting married, who are just getting married, you better be careful. We are telling you what makes it work. Even if you don't feel love for your marriage to be to be sanitized, you must still say I. Did you answer me? You know, sometimes you really feel I love you because you have just eaten a very good meal and, you know, your wife is all over you there and with joy you say, I love you, isn't it? But your demand as a man is too much. So most of the times your demand is too much and the woman is not missing up all the demands. You don't feel like saying I love you. Yeah? But the fact is that either you feel so or you don't feel so. For there to be peace under your roof, you must say what? I love you. And whenever you say, I love you, there is peace. Whenever you say that, darling, come on, let's talk. Talk, talk, talk. Say, what do we talk? Just say anything. I'm your husband. I just want to hear your beautiful voice. Just start saying something to me. <laughs> and the woman is happy, isn't it? Are you not happy when your husband does that to you? You are very happy? Very happy? If that be the case, why don't you understand God is the same? He's the same. He wants you to talk to him. He wants you to quote what he said to him. He wants you to think about it. He wants you to obey what he has written. So that you can make your ways prosperous. And then he says, I wish above all things that you might be in good health. And all things now go well with you as your mind. So your, your major asset is your faculty, your mind, what goes in your mind. Whatever you allow in your mind, you will become addicted to it as you confess it. Beginning from your health. A Christian is not supposed to be going from one health hazard to another health hazard. Ah, when the Bible says that you should be in good health. If you disobey the laws of God in health, you will suffer bad health. A Christian can be prosperous financially because he obeyed the laws of God in prosperity. But he may not be able to control to have peace in his home. Because he does not obey the law of God in marriage. You have become so workaholic that you don't have time for your husband or for your wife. And you think that, well, it's money she will eat. It's not money. Sometimes she wants emotion. Sometimes she wants someone to feel, to touch, to cherish, to hold. And you think that it's just money that satisfies all things, including that? You disobey God in marriage. Do you know something that there are some of us who have peace with everybody? <laughs> and there are some of us who we have pieces. You like this one, you hate that one. You look at this, say me like. That one, <laughs> point one. The other one, point two, point three. You like people because of the standard you created. But you see, apostles don't do that. As for me, I like you because you are you. So when you misbehave, I still love you. When you behave, I still love you. Because my loving you is not based on what you are. Either you feel ugly or you feel handsome or beautiful, I still love you. So if you now appear unbeautiful, it doesn't matter to me. It doesn't make a difference. Because my love for you is not because you were beautiful. My love for you is not because you were perfect. 
I can rebuke you. I can quarrel with you. But you see, love quarrel. Mm -hmm. Listen to me. So, I'm free with everybody. Two, I get to my bed and I sleep. Three, nightmare is far from me. <laughs> but if you decide, I don't like how that sister works. <laughs> What's your business with it? But how she works? Do you know how your own work? I don't like how he appears. Do you know how your own appearance? Your mind, I'm talking about your soul. As long as you can cause your soul not to prosper, you hinder your prosperity. Anything that can hinder your soul from prospering will hinder you from good health. It will hinder you from prosperity. What is the benefit of a foolish man like me? Somebody match my leg in the bus. Oh, thank you. He knew he matched my leg. I put my leg and he came deliberately and matched it. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> Excuse me. Oh, he stood on my leg. And I said, Father, remove his leg. <laughs> it's paining me. It's paining me. And then he removed his leg. And I never tell, told him that. Didn't you see me? Because I know if I said, didn't you see me? I'm looking for trouble. And I don't want trouble. I carry my pain. A little while the pain will go. And I have peace. My wife said yes. I said no. Yes, yes. Okay, yes. <laughs> and I have peace. Because my soul. I owe nobody quarrel. I owe nobody hatred. I wish everybody successful. Then why should I be sick? So if I'm sick, what do I do? I read this scripture. It says, I pray that you may enjoy good health. And I command health to my body. I told them in the first service, recently I had a, a pain in my eye. And I told my wife. She said, no, we must call the GP. Yes. We called the GP. Really that day, my eye just looked cloudy. And as far as I'm concerned, if anything happened to my body, devil is not part of those who can touch me. So my, not, my mind cannot go to the devil because what he, I've never seen him in my area. I saw Satan only twice, that's all. And that is enough. <laughs> Hello. Uh -huh, I don't need to see him anymore. He's in active business, you know. So, but he wouldn't just appear like that. So, I thought, I remember that some time ago I pulled something in my car and it hit my eye. And I cannot even remember which of the eyes. So, mommy said, oh, we'll phone GP, we'll phone GP. So, and then GP gave us early morning appointment. And I will wake up, pray, pray till midnight, sleep late, wake up early, pray and then sleep. And at that time I knew that we would be sleeping because we were praying. I don't go to early morning. So, I prayed over my eyes too. And both of us slept beyond the appointment. <laughs> which is a good sleep. By the time I wake up, my eyes is all right. And my wife said, ah, we have the appointment of GP. I said, yes. She called the GP. They said that it's a general line. So we couldn't get through to the GP again. But I said to her, but I don't have eye pain anymore. So the day I have eye pain again, we call GP. <laughs> I would be. But now, I had eye pain yesterday. How can you go to GP and say to GP, yesterday I had eye pain, but now I'm okay. That's why I come to see you. So we couldn't go to the GP, and I'm all right. I told you about beginning of this year, I was having flu. The whole of my body was fluing. <laughs> what about the flu is? So what did I do? Prayed? Yes, I was leading prayer throughout. Sleep? Well. Drink water? Yes. I drank so much water. Because I had someone say before that if you are having flu, drink much water. I, I drank water. And I slept. And I prayed. Because I have to be conducting prayer.
day one, day two, day three, day four, day five, day six, day seven, and the flu was going, and it was going, and it was going, it was going, and no more flu. You must enjoy good health. A lot of sicknesses have their origin from your soul. I don't have hypertension. I don't have high blood pressure. And I don't know how it can come in. I give my heart peace. Worry? I don't worry. Why? Because if I worry, I learned over the years, none of my worry have changed my condition. And I also learned God. Some things you will pray, 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 pray. God won't do it all. He is just God. Because he has set a particular time to do it. You will pray all this world. He will be looking at you. And when the time comes, you have stopped praying. That's what happened to Abraham. Abraham prayed, 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 prayed. God even spoke to Abraham mouth to mouth that you will be. He said, look at the stars of heaven. He said, say, 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 that's how your children will be. And Abraham was getting older and older after God said. After some time, Sarah said that, <laughs> Abraham, you know what? Maybe God meant that through my servant, you will have the children. And Abraham said, well, you are my wife. So Sarah fixed Abraham up. <laughs> and the child that was born out of that disobedience is a thorn in the flesh of the descendants of Sarah till today. And God didn't stop him. So when Abraham too had prayed and it seemed as if it's too late, he now forgot it. After they have stopped praying and they have decided to learn how to hand over things to God, a woman is growing older. Others are getting married. It should it be concerned of the one getting older? No! What's her business? Is it not God who brings husband? Those who rush to husband, they rush out to Really, some of them, when they try to rush out, the, the husband door will catch their leg. <laughs> they will have one leg in, one leg out. They pay, hey, hey, may that not be your portion. So if a woman has not married, and somebody is saying that, oh, your mates are married, that person is a messenger of Satan. Don't listen, no. Tell that person who tell you that, that uh, maybe you the one who manufactured husband. Manufacture one. What does it matter? If you are waiting, and you are prayed, that is what God does. Forget about it. Keep on serving him. It's like when you have read, you read for examination and you are going to the to test and you are getting anxiety. It is what you read that is left with you. Some people will pray, Father, let a miracle happen and they haven't read. The miracle that will happen is that you will fail. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you just fail. That's a miracle. You might say, study to show yourself. Now, let me say this to you, therefore. Abraham eventually gave up. He learned not to be anxious and just leave it for God. Ch children, if we know where to manufacture children, we'll go for it. But God is the one who gives children. Husband, if we know how to manufacture husband, we go. really, if I know how to manufacture husband, all the girls and women, I will just give them husband. I will be manufacturing it. <laughs> but I can't. It's God who does that. Okay, now. So therefore, what I can handle, you can handle it. Just trust him. So when Abraham got to the place, that okay, I gave up God. God now came. I said, what I spoke to you 25 years ago. <laughs> Mr. Abraham. And I'm sure Abraham must have asked God, which, one, which, one, which, which of the ones? He said, yeah, yeah, the one I told you that you see the stars and your children will be like the stars. Ah! He said, yes, yes, yes. I, I've got one. I said, which one? I said the one that Haggai, Haggai, let, let that one be the. And God said, mm. You see, Abraham, I promise you through Sarah, you fix Haggai. This is what Haggai will become of you. I will bless him because he came out of you. But this is the problem we're going to be to you because you're quick fit. He said, Now I tell you, by next year when I come back, that child will be born. Oh, God, you see. We are old now and we are bent over. And God said, that is why it's easier for me to do it. Because now you are totally effortless. Are you struggling with God? Are you struggling with God? Your mind, your soul. And you know something with God? When I read this thing, I excite myself. After that boy was born and the boy grew, 
God said, Abraham, I want you a sacrifice. And God said, oh, here's all the years I give you sacrifice. And God said that, he said, well, okay, what I will do, a cow? You know, I have many cows, I have many cattle. He said, no, that boy I gave you. Kill him for me. Abraham said, what the Lord give it? No problem. And he puts the stick on the head of the boy. And they were going, the boy said, dad, every year when we go for sacrifice, you have a ram. Where is the ram? He says, Jehovah Jireh. God will provide. But in his heart, he was going to slaughter the boy. And they got to the altar and he tied the boy's hands and feet as he tied the ram. That is all he has. Which God had promised. If it was some of you, we say that devil is the one telling me to do that. Who will give back to the stars? Of heaven that God promised me. Your mind. Until you train your soul to that level, there is a level of health you cannot enjoy. There is a level of prosperity you cannot enjoy. He had to take the knife as he was going to slaughter the boy. God said, Stop. You pass this test. Somebody will pass the test of God today. Listen, therefore, I leave you with this. What matters is not anything around your life. It's your soul. Can I say this to you also? Some of you are asking God for a reverse of some things you have costed yourself. Let me talk about health. In our prayer book, we deal with physical exercise, profit the body. Isn't it? And spiritual exercise, what? Profit in all, all things. So, which means the Bible says that you should do physical exercises. Is that correct? Yes, sir. And the Bible says you should watch what you eat. Is that correct? Yes, sir. I didn't hear church. Yes, sir. So, what happens to somebody who doesn't watch what he eats? He commits sin by eating too much. It's a sin. To eat too much is a sin. That is being glutonous. Gluton is sinful. Glutony. It is very sinful indeed. And after you have eaten according to your hunger, your body does what? Bloats. Huh. Am I not talking to some people? Yes, I love women who increase in size and they decrease. Are you with me now? Because they have trained their mind to recognize that the day I put on my size 18 and it can't go, ah, something is wrong. And you see them going to the old gym. <laughs> and they cut down what they are eating. This I don't want. That I don't want. And they will go back to their size. Listen to me. Do you know that if you cannot train your body, you cannot, if you cannot discipline your body, you can't discipline your soul. If you cannot discipline your belly, it's not every time you have hunger that your body needs food. It's not every time they put food in your front. You must finish the... You, there is no way in the Bible that tells you that you must finish the plate. I'm talking about spiritual laws. Did you see a Jesus with big belly? When Jesus came to the world and he had big belly and then his trouser he has to put it on top of his belly. <laughs> Did you see that kind of Jesus? Why? He treks miles going to preach. Sometimes he doesn't have time to eat. Not because he doesn't want to eat. Sometimes there is food he will refuse to eat because you must subject your body. We did all this in the week when we were praying. Your soul determines your body. Your soul determines your success. Your soul determines your future. Stand up on your feet. We're going to pray. You're going to tell God, Father, assign a messenger, your messenger at the door of my lips. Enable my soul to cooperate with the mind of Christ. Lift up your voice. I'm going to pray. Enable my soul to cooperate with the mind of Christ. I must be fruitful. Tell the Lord to help you to be fruitful.
If you know you are struggling in any area, regards your mind. Talk to the Lord about it. Father, we pray thee, grant me success in my heart. Grant me success in my faculty. Enable me, Lord God, to be fruitful in the realm of my mind. We thank you, King of Heaven. In Jesus' anointed name we are praying. Mm. Lord, I pray for everyone here that is sick. I look at the sickness of the soul today. There are some people who have attitudes in their mind. And the attitudes control their lives. And those attitudes are ungodly. Lord, I arrest such heart to obey Christ in Jesus' name. Amen. The Bible says, casting down every vain imagination and taking every thought captive. Every heart that produces vain imagination, we are rest to obey Christ. Amen. There are some of us who have sinned in our eating, appetite. Father God, I ask that you forgive such sin. And Lord, I command every stomach wall that is oppressive to be regulated. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I decree that our stomach will not rule our world again. Amen. People who have been held bound because of their unfruitful mind, Lord, I ask for healing to come to every man. Amen. People who have not been reading the scriptures, and because of that, you are not able to accelerate with the grace of God is upon, that is upon their lives. Lord, I ask that you heal such mind. Amen. Help us, O oh God, to commit ourselves to the urgency of heaven. Amen. That your name may be glorified. Amen. This we ask and believe in, you've done it. Even as you ask in Jesus' name. Amen. There are people who have health conditions here. As it is, Lord, you say, according to the scripture, you, you, you pray that we'll be of good health. Everyone that is suffering from health condition, I bring them to the pool of your healing. Amen. I command your condition healed in the name of Amen. Jesus. People who are having tension in their marriage, I command peace into their marriage. Amen. Father, as we go this week, we come on Friday to testify Amen. that all your heart for us is fulfilled. Amen. In Jesus' anointed name we are praying.